how are we saved? What is the process by which God is saving us? Is it enough to agree with the historical reality of Christ's death and resurrection? To say, I believe this. Is it enough to say a certain formula of words in prayer? Say a certain prayer and that is it. We are saved. Well, to answer this question, we simply need to look at Jesus' own teaching. Jesus taught something very different to these ideas. When we look at the, the parable of the tax collector and the Pharisee, the tax collector who was a sinner, a genuine sinner, the Pharisee who was zealous for the keeping of the law, and yet it was the tax collector who left the temple justified before God, the Pharisee was not justified. He left the temple unjustified before God because the Pharisee's outward keeping of the law filled him so much with pride that he was unable to repent. Whereas the tax collector, full of sin, a life full of sin, found his repentance covered all his sins before God. It was the repentance of the tax collector in his humility that justified him before God. It is repentance that God demands of us. It is repentance that Christ first called us to, St. John the Baptist also, even preparing the people for the coming of Christ. Christ says, repent, repent. Repentance is absolutely necessary for our salvation. Without repentance, we cannot be saved. The man who died on the cross beside Christ, who entered the kingdom of heaven, his tradition teaches us that he was the first man to enter the kingdom of heaven with Christ. On the cross, he accepted his punishment because he recognized his sin. It was an act of repentance before Christ. Christ forgave him and promised him paradise that very day. Repentance is the very foundation of our Christian life. It is the very foundation of everything that we hope for, everything that we look to, that we live for. We cannot, we cannot live the Christian life without repentance. If we wish to receive the fulfillment of the promises of God, then we must repent. Everything, everything we long for in God is founded in our repentance. And when we look at the lives of the saints, those men and women whose lives have been filled with holiness as they drew closer to God, in them, we see not less repentance, but more. As they draw closer to God, they are able to see their sin with greater clarity, with greater understanding the true depths of the sin within them as human beings. This is no contradiction. As we draw closer to God, as we are purified, we will see more of our sin and have a greater need of repentance. Repentance and our recognition of the need of our repentance is one of the great signs of spiritual progress. If we live a life where we feel we have nothing to repent of, perhaps we look at someone else and say, well, at least I don't live like him, like the Pharisee looking down on the tax collector. At least I don't do those things like those people. Perhaps we're proud that we've achieved some status in a religious community. Perhaps, perhaps we are judging other people. All of this is a sign that we are making no progress at all, that we are far from God, that our spiritual life is truly in danger. But when we begin to see truly how sinful we are, as our 
awareness of our sin grows, then we know we are drawing closer to God. But the opposite is true. As we remain far away from God, we remain blind to our sin. We may carry on as normal. Repentance of what? How do I sin? Our salvation requires that we repent. Our salvation requires that every one of us repents. And it is difficult. The gate is narrow. Few will enter. Christ has opened up the road to salvation. He has died, he has been resurrected. The kingdom of heaven beckons all of us. God says, enter my kingdom. Taste the sweetness, the joy of the treasures of my kingdom. Christ has opened that gateway. The road to the kingdom of God is there before us, every one of us. And it is repentance that carries us on that road. It is repentance that takes us through those gates. The process of our salvation is not a, a single moment, a single moment of declaration or even recognition of something. It is a process of change. And that change is grounded in our repentance, the recognition of our sin, the turning away, the change of our lives. The proud Pharisee believed he was already saved. Pharisee means purified. He believed he was purified. He'd done it. It was job done. He'd achieved what was necessary and he believed he was right with God. And he left unjustified. The sinner knew he was in need of God's mercy and God's forgiveness. God's grace works in the humble heart. This is a divine mystery, the divine mystery of God's love and mercy. His grace works in those hearts that are humbled before him. Those humble hearts that recognize their sin, their falling away their desperate need of forgiveness and mercy. If we are willing to be changed through repentance, then we may enter the kingdom of God.